these are the last couple days of January, which makes it about as bad as it ever gets here on the Ice Planet Hoth. Can you hear that? The trees actually squeak from ice and the sun is like a just a, a fragment of what I want it to be. In my ongoing attempt to keep this warm, I got rid of that coal boiler that was there and replaced it with this little guy. And so I'll give you an overview of this. I'm no expert on it, but it's a coal boiler. Burner, sorry, coal burner. And I'm trying to use wood with it to keep warm. And it's not quite big enough for this space but I'm making do with what I have because I got it for a song. Simply put, this video will be a quick look at this piece of equipment just so you can kind of get an understanding for it. Whew, hear that? Wow! As I was saying, as I've said, I'm no expert on the subject. I'm new to this. But this is called a Harman Mark II. And we're in coal country, so these little coal burners are, well, they're readily available. I'm in the part of southwest central PA that it's not anthracite country here. We have the old fashioned, cheaper bituminous coal. But this, I'm going to burn. I'm going to try anthracite, but it's about five or six dollars a bag for about something like 40 pounds, and one of those will burn, I don't know, supposedly 24 hours, but I would prefer to use wood because it grows on the trees around here. First, a quick look at the inside, and I'm going to kind of rush through this because I'm in a bit of a hurry to get a fire, you can imagine. Look in there, and there's great that this lever adjusts. They call them shaker grates and it's for, I don't know, knocking the unused coal down into the collection bin at the bottom, which is here. So a slight modification that, I'm ma that I've made to it so that I can use wood instead of coal is this. It's just an old piece of stainless steel that was that I cut away from an old gas grill that came with the property. You make do with what you have. But look, here are some pieces of coal that haven't quite burned. This is, that's just regular wood ash. But this is a piece of anthracite. Now you can tell because of its metallic luster in the middle that it hasn't completely finished. And that's because I'm not getting this hot enough to burn coal with just a wood fire in it. I'll show you the differences between the two types because if you're not in coal country you've likely never seen it before. And anthracite is quite beautiful if you ask me. And it's actually despite the politics that are associated with coal, as far as a residential heating solution, anthracite is actually quite efficient. It's very clean burning, despite what you might think. Usually the political uh, objections have to do with industrial uses of coal as an energy source, because it is a finite uh, body of energy. 
So here's a big chunk that came from back where I used to live before I moved up to the top of the mountain. And this stuff was everywhere back where I used to live. And it powered the, the expanse of the Industrial Revolution for a long, long time because it provided the energy that we needed for the steel industry. In comparison, these are pieces of anthracite and they look glossy and metallic and they are more dense and less flaky and considerably harder. It burns hotter because it has a higher carbon content. Okay, but this is really beyond the purview of this video, so back to the... Oh wow, you know it's cold when your Bic lighter won't even light. Look at that. It actually has a really good draw makes a nice draft and that has of course everything to do with how your flu is set up and I really didn't know much about it so I I got quite lucky that it worked this little pile here is all oak it's in my opinion probably the best fuel it's all it's also the best starter because it's stringy for one and it burns hot and these strings make good in fuels for the you know the, the beginning of the fire but a good straight piece has a nice split to it and and you make lots of surface area and you'll get a nice fire cooking in no time. I really should not be doing this right now because my hands are so cold. <laughs> and I have some that I can use over in the corner there. So that's enough. I'm not superstitious at all, but I do have one. I see it as a sign of good fortune if you can light your fire with one flick of your lighter. Maybe that comes from that old Quentin Tarantino movie, Four Rooms. Remember that? Uh, if you catch the reference, you'll know what I'm talking about. This wood is not as dry as I would prefer. It's not well seasoned, but I'm using what I have. But that's okay. I can compensate with paper. <laughs> Just use walmart.com and you'll have more than you ever need. One of the best surprises, pleasant surprises, about this stove so far. And it might not be the stove so much as the flu, because the flu has everything to do with how it draws. You need to have so much flu up, and you can't have too many elbows, and you don't want it to, I don't know, have any sort of design that's unconventional because it will affect its efficiency. Oh, sorry, I went off track. It draws well. I mean, it draws amazingly well. In lots of stoves, you have to have a very careful balance between this and that, and, or else you'll get a backdraft and, it will, and smoke will billow into your living space. This is not the case here. I can have this fire running hot or cold at any time with either combination of things open and no smoke comes out. I can't count that as any sort of 
I, I can't take credit for it. It has, no, it has nothing to do with any sort of expertise on my part. It was pure luck. The stars are, sh are smiling on me. Well, wherever the good fortune comes from, I'll take it. But it makes this an ideal little wood burner for in my shop. Because I'm just a couple feet away, and it makes it nice. Whoa, what was that? I think it was the steel adjusting its temperature. Um, it makes a nice ambiance, right? while you're in the wood shop working. What I mean is that it's nice to have a fire in general, you know, going in a wood burner while I'm in here working. But what's even nicer is when it's a wide open fire. So looking from the side, you can see no smoke. And that's ideal. That's what we want. Mixed into my pile here, there are some other rather bizarre woods. Bizarre to me. This isn't bizarre. This is a piece of cherry, I believe. Notice how the heartwood has a different color. The bark is kind of a giveaway. This is kind of an oddball to me. You'll, I doubt you'll get it unless you live around here. This is what I think it is, is quaking aspen. Kind of looks like maple-ish. I kind of thought it might have been a beech because there's a lot of those around here and I was never familiar with those. It splits wonderfully and it has a kind of a pinkish color, a pretty grain. I would, I've never built anything with it, but I would imagine that it would be a likable wood to work with. Now the oak I've been saving at the bottom of my pile for this occasion because this is as bad as January ever get, or as the winter ever gets around here. As I've said, it's so cold that it's just it in here it's just above the threshold of freezing and the boiler that I had before it was a, a it was a behemoth there it was made for heating up water to circulate it into pipes that ran under the driveway and all the way to the house into the boiler system to supplement the existing uh, radiant heat system I wasn't interested in that. It's too much upkeep. I don't want to argue about why I'm not doing it. I just, for me, it was preferable to just have a simple wood burner. And so far, so good. This seems as though it's going to work. It, it heats it up rather quickly in here. The, oh, I never got to the point. The coal boiler had thick walls of steel and inside something like 40 gallons of water, so it was just a hulk of mass that would store thermal energy, but it took up space and for the most part just sat there cold. Once you got it hot after four hours of burning, then it would, can, it would radiate heat over the course of the night and it would keep it from ever freezing in here. But it's just not suitable for what I need it for. Also, there was triple wall pipe that surrounded it that kept any of the heat, wait, pause. The triple wall pipe kept any of the heat that was in the flue from radiating into the room and it just allowed it to escape up the chimney. So I took the inner layer, which is just stainless, and used it and I'm just discarding the other layers. And then I only had to replace these pipes here. For those of you who are interested, long-term viewers, I'm going to add a, a partition there, which will cut the size of this room down to about one-third. I don't need such a large shop, it's ridiculous. 
a well-organized, smaller and easier to heat shop would be preferable. And back to the main focus here, which is the Mark II, the Harman Mark II. Part of the deal for the person who bought the boiler because he wanted to reduce the price was that he had this old thing sitting around and he would throw it in if I would knock $200 off the price, which I happily did once I saw it. I think it's worth far more than that. But I also accepted far or less for the boiler than I wanted to. All things considered, I'm happy. that This was only supposed to get me through the year, but I think I may just adapt to it because I'm really starting to like it. I never thought it would be so efficient for wood. Well, as per heating efficiency, I'm not so certain yet. I, only time will tell me about that. But for its ease of use and how quickly it heats up, those are the tests that matter to me the most so far. And it's passing with flying colors. You saw what it's like out there today, and I'm sitting here very comfortably. I have done some work on it already. It was quite rusty, and so I had to do, you know, some superficial work with the grinder, with the angle grinder. Also, I replaced these fire ropes. Um, the, it's about two dollars a foot at the fireplace store, and this required about eight feet to do it. What I did was put some high temperature electrical wrap tape over the end so that they wouldn't fray and I used guess of course epoxy I used to pour epoxy to set it in what's the worst that can happen all you walls nightmares I want to come through I also used two part epoxy on the ends to tack a, you know to attach one butt to the other and we'll find out if it held up. They sell a special glue for six or seven dollars, but I could buy a whole bottle of epoxy for that. <laughs> the glass is a concern as well. I may have to replace it. And these Harman stoves, the parts are pretty expensive. But I may be able to clean it yet. I'm going to keep trying. I tried oven cleaner. It didn't work. I'm already familiar with the ash solution. You take a piece of newspaper, wet it, and then take wood ash and scour it. It didn't work though. And I'm not quite sure it can work. It feels scratched as though this, the glass is sandblasted from goodness knows what its history was. This is all brass on the front, which is, needless to say, beautiful. As is this, which you can use to dial in perfectly your burn. This allows more air in. Since I'm using wood and not coal, I believe I need to give it more air. So I've been running it, for the most part, with it just like that so that there's just a crack and with that open and it seems to burn really nicely and then this it doesn't matter if I'm in here I leave it open and it radiates more heat if I'm not and I go in the house for safety I leave it shut now here I would like to ask those of you who know because I'm not certain how I should proceed with this the fire brick in the back and the front is there. It's, it could be replaced because it looks like it has a lot of age on it. But the, the, the side, those that belong in the sides are gone. And I thought, why is it there at all? The fire brick acts as an insulator and for coal it would be a good thing because it stops the high heat from, well, potentially warping the steel. But while I'm burning firewood, it's not going to happen. I'm never going to achieve those sorts of temperatures. So do I have to concern myself at all with the fire brick if I'm not using coal? Why not just take it out completely and enjoy a larger firebox?
What do you think? Tell me down below. I just came back in from editing the first part of this video. Sorry that I'm so long-winded, by the way. 20 minutes already. And now it's screaming hot. So it's certainly doing its job. I suppose coal burns hotter, but I don't know that I want it to burn hotter than that. It seems dangerous. But I'm a newbie here. Highly recommend. I got the stainless steel ones from Amazon. They were 20 bucks, I think. You do have to do some work to them in order to get them to work. I made, focus, focus, focus. I used a hacksaw to make those little cuts, the tip to give it some traction. They really do not work unless you do that. Also, you have to go over it all with a file because the edges were so ridiculously sharp that they were dangerous, and specifically here, very uncomfortable to use. But after you do those modifications, it's a nice tool. Common questions about them, are they strong and can you use them in, with one hand? Uh, kind of and kind of. But they can also be very precise. Look at this tool. It's an ibis. What a piece of art. Shame that I barely use it, especially now that I got that stainless steel claw. Nevertheless, that's to be appreciated, isn't it? And we return once again to the subject of this video. Look at this. It's just a little electric fan. And inside of this hole, there's a steel baffle that goes up this way and over the top. And the best way I can explain it is that there's an air space at the top where all of this becomes extremely hot air. So when air blows through the baffle, it forces it out of the front right there. The stainless steel pan keeps the hot coals, once you have a bed of coals, from falling through. I also added a damper. Can you hear it? But I don't think I'm going to be using it much. Maybe later on when I'm more experienced I'll be able to use it to fine tune. But that's really more for a fireplace or for a wood burning stove and for this it seems as though you can already control it so well with this that I don't really think it will be necessary but time will tell here's a random artsy low angle shot that has the juxtaposition of hot and cold just for some dramatic effect yeah I'm not really into that well, I just wanted to show you my new toy, uh, not just because I want to justify the purchase of it or what I did or rub it in your face how cool it is, <laughs> but it's neat to see the inner workings of something else and it's neat to see how other people live in other places. I'm sure most of you don't live anywhere near where I am, so it's neat to see what goes on elsewhere. But. Uh, a little more of my rationale, some of the newer EPA fireplaces, not that I don't respect their engineering and efficiency, but they're kind of rinky tank to be honest. You take an old solid steel piece of equipment like this and it's just solid. And these little coal burners are just downright overbuilt and I, I like that. I like the rugged sort of dependability of it all. This particular one was 1985, I think the tag said, so that really lasts. I mean, 
looking at some of the newer ones out there, when you go to look at them at the store, they're the the gauge of the material was so thin. I I just it really turned me away. So I I was really hoping to find something on the used market, and so far this is ticking all of my boxes. So okay, I'm off. Check in later and see. Maybe I'll grow to hate it, but I doubt it. I, so far, I'm pretty satisfied. See you on the next subject. Thanks if I've kept your attention. That's complimentary.